Well, for more on what's happening on the markets, let's bring in Laura Lau, Chief Investment Officer at Brompton Group. Laura, thanks so much for joining us today. Great to be here, Jacqueline. So, Laura, this has really been a, a push and pull between increased concerns around the banking sector and then relief from, from government, even from these other banks stepping in to help. Uh, how do you think this week has, has played out? I think it, it's just been wild swings all week. And I think the governments, what they're trying to do is they don't want contagion. They don't want the whole system to go down. So they're kind of balancing what do we do to make sure the system doesn't break down and what do we do to make sure the taxpayer is not on the hook. And also, this doesn't happen again. Because if you guarantee everybody, they'll just do risk-seeking behavior and try to make money at all costs. So they're really trying to balance that. How much of a, a risk of contagion do you think remains? So far, I think that they've done a good job of containing it, especially in the U.S. banking sector. I think that the facilities they've put in place should calm things down. But it does take time for people to get confidence back in the system. And there's also a danger that some of these smaller banks, that there is a run on them. So that's, I think, what they're very afraid of. Because the other thing is about 40% of the lending in the U.S., are these smaller banks. So you do want to make sure that nothing goes down and you do want to make sure that they do continue lending to keep the economy going. Yeah, what would the ramifications be if, if more of these smaller or more regional or more niche banks were to fail? So what'll happen, which we really started to see happening is run on deposits, people moving the money out into the bigger, safer banks. So that's partly why you see some of these big banks like JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, they actually have too many deposits now. And they're willing to put their deposits at these regional banks because they have too much money, they can't lend it out fast enough. So if they put these deposits in these smaller banks, it does rebalance that system. Now, when you're thinking about some of the emergency efforts or measures that have been taken uh, in order to make sure that some of those regional banks have the liquidity that they need so that, you know, they're able to borrow against some of their investments uh, in, in the short term uh, in order to make sure that they, you know, have cash in the bank. Um, it, what does that end up doing to the efforts of the U.S. Central Bank to uh, get inflation down. You know, it's been raising interest rates to try to cool things down. But, you know, if that does that mean more money is, is going into the system there? So the Fed was on a program for quantitative tightening. And now this has blown up their balance sheet again. So that's one thing. Uh, but the question is, if they don't lend it out, then the velocity of money comes down. But I do think that, as you said, it, do they keep on hiking rates? So I do believe the smart thing next Wednesday uh, for Powell to do would be to continue with the one quarter uh, percent hike and then just and say everything's good, the banking system is still strong and we'll and not commit to increasing or decreasing rates, just seeing what happens. And I think that's likely because if they don't increase interest rates, everybody's going to get even more worried. What does the Fed see that we don't see? What is the Fed afraid of? So that's why we think that they will go ahead with that quarter hike. Yeah, there will be a lot of eyes on the head of the Fed, Jerome Powell, next week when he goes to make that decision. So with everything going on right now, uh, what are you thinking about when it comes to areas where uh, you, you would see potential right now for investing? So I think, you know, typically when you have a risk off event like this, uh, people try to go to the safest places. So uh, things would be like the U.S. dollar, it would be utilities. Uh, and ironically, what we've seen is one space which we typically think of as this higher risk would be technology. Because what we've seen is with uh, the uh, yield curve coming down, especially at the long end, that's typically better for technology stocks. So we've seen some of those do better than expected, especially since they do have a lot of money 
and they are actually trying to become more efficient and cut costs. So that's, it's rather ironic. It, it is, isn't it? Because I, I, tech had such a rough year last year. Uh, to see a, a shift in that happening in this moment, it, it does seem a little bit, uh, a little bit unexpected. But I would buy the profitable tech companies with cash flow, strong free cash flow. I wouldn't buy the, you know, the non-profitable tech companies because those are the ones that are going to be more at risk in any environment, I think. And, and you'd also be looking for where people are, are spending money these days as well, Laura, when we're, you know, in this environment with rising prices and people's budgets are feeling constrained. You're looking for some opportunities where, where they'll be spending? Yes. So what we've seen is consumer staples have held up very well. Uh, people still go to Dollarama. They still go to the grocery store, Loblaws. Uh, and what's very interesting now is we're reclassifying some of these companies. So, for instance, Target, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Dollarama were actually considering consumer discretionary companies, and they're going to actually be moved into the staples category to recognize that people in bad times actually spend more money at these places. 